Yo, what is going on, you vaccinated Vaporian? I've got an interesting one for you guys today. It's this Mewtwo Urshifu build that Simon Trottier just used to take down the Chill GCG tournament just the other day. And uh, it's wild. It's weird. Uh, I don't know what to expect from it, but uh, I think he's been playing it for a little while. And uh, like I said, just took down a big Chill GCG tournament uh, just last night. So I wanted to give it a try. I want to show it to you guys. Um, we got the Mewtwo uh line in here not a whole ton of options a few less options than something like the the psychic mew3 deck you know there's like no reshizard um <clears throat> what else is missing from here no reshizard no vile plume we've got the, the gengar and mimikyu got the trevnor still got a tina chomp uh and i assume with double gengar and mimikyu the main idea behind this specific build is you probably want to go first and then you know choose between trying to set up urshifu first or the mewtwo um, and then go for like a turn two house or just hit with Urshifu on turn two as well. That could also be our go-to line. But it feels like with this build, we don't want to go second and use Star Search like we did with the other build um, or go second and turn one house because then our Poltergeist is going to be a little bit weaker. I feel like going first and then going for that turn, the double energy house GX attack or just attacking with the Urshifu on turn two is going to be the better route or the route that we want to take um, overall. But we'll figure it out. We're going to do some learning here as we uh, play this deck for the first time. So buckle up. I don't got much else to say about the list. So let's go ahead and let's get into some games. All right, here we go. Getting into our first one. Like I said, I feel like we want to go uh, first and try and set up, you know, like a turn two uh, house or maybe even go with the Urshifu on turn two. It really depends on what our opponent's playing. And they did mulligan. So we're going to get quite a bit of information between this hand and then whatever they open with. We see Lighting Energy and Wondrous Labyrinth. So Urshifu sounds pretty good to me. But we get off the top deck a quick ball okay so yeah urshifu sounds pretty good to me um oh man but we don't really have to be that aggressive with the urshifu i don't think so we could go like still get an energy on the mewtwo here i think which is going to be a little bit more uh impactful as we go along let me grab one of the gengar and mimikyu's and we could bench an urshifu uh but then we don't have any draw power to work with actually so maybe I, we don't want to do that <clears throat> maybe i just want to like go for like 100 furious blows even next turn that would be fine. I'll bench the Mewtwo, though. And then attach the Rapid Strike energy. I'm almost, like, fearful of Crushing Hammer or Fan here. I do want to, like, get this in play to, like, discard one of these guys. Probably the Gengar and Mimikyu. <clears throat> so we have a easier access to the house in the following turns. But this is going to be harder to find if they do stamp us. Because we do have a pretty big hand here. Next we're going to go with this and i'm just gonna pass yeah we can go with 100 furious blows on the next turn um i have no idea what my opponent is playing so that's not super helpful for us right now we don't know what my opponent's playing here uh we'll figure out shortly we could just go with guzman hollow next turn and go with the the furious blows it's probably like if i had to guess i would guess coco v max it could be green's pika rom as well i've not seen that in forever the, gr the most popular greens i mean you can call it again there's that that fan i was scared of and there goes my energy so things are gonna get quite a bit more difficult here not too ridiculous so it is the coco build okay so it is uh green's coco but it's not that big of a deal i don't think that we lost it. i mean it, it does kind of stink we can't do the hunter furious blows this turn but i think we're still in a pretty decent spot if i had to guess still need to figure this thing out though i don't i could just strafe this turn to be honest i could like go boss strafe <clears throat> that doesn't sound too ridiculously good I don't want to use the Gods of Manhala to thin out the deck a little bit. <clears throat> and then maybe go from there. I don't know, we can go like Gods of Manhala, get rid of these two. Grab this. Grab the Rapid Strike energy. And grab an Air Balloon. I could just strafe into the Mewtwo. So get this in play. Match this here. Uh, they probably play Tool Scrapper, so I don't want to use the Air Balloon yet. And I'm just going to strafe, I guess, into the Mewtwo. Maybe I'm playing this a little bit too slow, but like... I don't feel that pressured for my opponent to really do anything but we'll see how this goes <clears throat> and then we have the 100 furious blows on the next turn i guess another thing is i don't want to be too aggressive because the whole thing behind their deck is they're trying to paralyze us um so maybe i would rather even just go attach 100 furious blows like boss 100 furious blows oh they have the escape rope they can't ko my urshifu but that is still pretty annoying i'm not gonna lie that is pretty annoying that they're gonna be able to hit my urshifu here uh if they want to i guess they still need to get the energy they have the escape rope they'd only be able to hit it for 200 as well they couldn't quite knock it out so 
not that big of a deal to be honest it is annoying it is annoying i'm not gonna lie it's annoying uh they're being a little bit annoying here but it's not that big of a deal and actually they're just going for an electrify so now we're definitely gonna go boss 100 furious blows ko this coco it's got four energy on it it's stacked we don't like that so we're just gonna chill once again we're not really being too aggressive at all here taking our time just being like i just kind of want to get energy in play the chance of me like be going like dead a change or crobat uh and then just drawing a bunch of cards and trying to pull off like an attack with the vmax is pretty unlikely so like going for it is like okay but like i could also just chill get this energy out of the hand we still have a lot of energy in our hand here and now that we got this then i have the prize cards this hand will thin out pretty well next turn but here comes a marty from our opponent and that's like another thing if they just like marty us or reset stamp us or whatever after we take like a big knockout basically didn't do anything anyways with like putting a crowbar to Dene in play if we whiffed the big attack which is likely for us to whiff because it's just not not that likely for us to hit the play so don't overextend yeah don't overextend our opponent doesn't find anything we play it slow we set up we start attacking and get a pretty clean dub there uh yeah my opponent got a little bit greedy with their greens I think not getting a uh maybe they thought they could have KO'd me with the escape rope and that's why they're like oh get this escape rope force up the urshifu knock it out wait I can't knock it out I don't know what that was but uh definitely probably could have grabbed like an evolution instance or something and got a coco v max to protect the energy but uh we'll take that dub all right here we go again getting into another one the first one worked out well and it feels like going for like i said feels like going first really gives us the most options with this deck especially going blindly into you know whatever our opponent might be playing i assume like you know other matchups going second there's probably a couple matchups where going second is fine but um as far as not knowing what my opponent is playing i think going first is just going to be the the way we want to go here uh this opening hand is uh <clears throat> well not great I almost want to open the Eldegoss here yeah I think I am going to open Eldegoss here because I don't want Tina Chomp in play with that three retreat costs and I'd rather attack with it through a Mewtwo anyways uh and I can also move this with Air Balloon whereas I can't move the Tina Chomp with Air Balloon um uh, it's possible we're in a matchup where linear attack turn one wouldn't be terrible but we have no idea what my opponent's playing so yeah I think just opening the Eldegoss is going to be it's going to have to be fine at this point because I've already opened it so we'll see how it goes uh Snor oh they're playing Orbeetle all right Orbeetle from my opponent definitely a I think it's Orbeetle Grass deck box Snorlax power plant is not something you see all the time in Orbeetle so now I'm a little bit less convinced uh I can't dead a change anymore but that's not that big of a deal I don't think uh we already topped the chaotic swell so now I do kind of want to dead a change because this is the only time I'll be able to get value out of them before I lose both of them so Try and get that extra draw power on the turn feels correct did not work out super well um yeah, quick wall away the Latios. grab this crowbat we don't really need the crowbat yet I was thinking about grabbing it well I kind of have to grab it now but I really shouldn't have done it like this should I I should just attach the Aurora to the Mewtwo kind of passed I don't know what I, what I was trying to what I think I was trying to get out of here um because i have to give up my boss or the urshifu off this aurora i was getting a little bit of far a little bit of a little bit far ahead of myself i kind of want to keep the boss i really like the idea of the boss so you know what? i might actually get rid of this urshifu even though that seems so bad there's just no reason to use crobat here we got the mewtwo we got the energy for turn we could have just chilled and used crobat in the next turn maybe combo with the boss now i am gonna get rid of the boss i guess i don't love it um i'm gonna go throw it down as well just in case i get an evolution i don't want to crobat yet though my opponent does like Marnie me on their next turn I don't really need anything else this turn I kind of got everything I needed so grabbing this crowd was just a mistake I should have just like put the Aurora energy on the Mewtwo discard the Latios hold the quick ball uh and then see if we top deck next turn because we could like top deck a draw supporter and just be fine or something like that and be like all right this is all I need um so tackles coming out for my opponent so we'll get a way better idea I think it's Orbeetle um uh, based on the the grass deck box that's what I'm kind of going off of here but we haven't seen any beetles yet there's a the turf field it is Orbeetle they just play power plant which is not something I kind of like it I guess for the late game it could be pretty cool uh you don't see it all the time in orb beetles what I want to say here um so we're looking for a house I think next turn to like take away their turn and then maybe boss KO the beetle that would be like ideal for us and that's kind of why I wanted to keep this boss around I guess I could have crowbatted and then discarded one of those cards with the Aurora energy but yeah we're trying to house and then boss there's another boss so if we can get a way to move this Eligos and hey no we're not getting that at all we could house then we have no energy to work with this is kind of stinks uh because we'd be losing another boss holy moly only one boss left that's not good we don't want just one boss left and we're losing our Malum Lana, which is super good in this matchup as well all right but we're trying to house this turn I'm still trying to house this turn let's see if we can't house switch energy did it switch um shouldn't need this so let's thin out this we're just trying to draw a bunch of cards here uh don't really want anything play this 
Once again, don't really. I could take the Guzman Hala. I don't mind having the Guzman Hala hand in hand. I don't think to get another energy next turn because we might want to go into housing next turn. But I'd rather Marnie house. So instead, I'm not going to take that at all. And or Marnie Night Watch um, house. Here we go. I would rather go Marnie Night Watch instead of Guzman Hall. Even if I don't have an energy in hand, which we did draw into one, I would rather just kind of set it up the other way. But yeah, we're looking to go Marnie Night Watch this turn. Um, or boss poltergeist KO the orbital sounds better to be honest. So I think I am gonna go for that. Um, because we did get the boss. <laughs> we did end up with the boss. Uh, I'm gonna set up another horror energy here while we have it. And then yeah, let's go for this poltergeist. It should definitely KO here. Yeah, not even close. Was it 300 damage? easy knockout 350 uh so the one problem is here we're at a boss we're down our mountain lot we're down a lot of really good cards in this matchup like the boss is just good in every matchup having some auto august effect is just good we could start attaching to the eldegoss and use float up to ko ko one of these dolls at some point and i think that is what i'm going to set up here so i'm going to start attaching to eldegoss to use it to ko one of these dolls um on a turn where it's just like well i don't want to we're going to start with night watching if night watching keeps them kind of suppressed but i'll put this uh probably the horror energy down here on the elder god i could put the horror energy on the active though and really get we'd be able to do 60 to them i guess we wouldn't quite get to the point where we could one hit ko them with calamitous slash uh we would need all four horror energy in here at, and at that point g max uh g max wave would one hit ko us so that's not good um so we'll go with marnie night watch here i will attach the elder because i do want the option to float up we KO through a doll at some point where we feel like Nightwatch probably isn't doing enough. Like if they have a big enough hand where it's just like, all right, Nightwatch isn't quite getting there. Like if they use Gourmandai's and then we whiff a, uh, if they use Gourmandai, yeah, see, then they can put all this stuff down on their bench. We can't, we can't really like, uh, punish them for it because we don't have any boss. There's a power plant going back to the deck as well. So we're going to need our next swell. Um, play this, thin out something. Probably the Jirachi. Oh no, our our next swell is prize. And if we Marnie them, we give them the power plant. This is not good. So I could reset stamp them and then Marnie them, which would shuffle their top deck. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna reset stamp then Marnie so they don't get that. I'm also gonna put the air balloon on the active so I can use Elagos on the next turn, theoretically. Um, throw that there. And then yeah, then we're gonna Marnie because we just we can't let it is our only reset stamp, but we just can't let them get that power plant right here. Because this is one of our main lines of play to take here is the night watch line um we're gonna go with that now um but we can't let them get the power plant because then we just lose they have a ton of outs to power plant they have gus mahala they have the stadium itself they have tag calls to get gus mahala so they have a lot of ways to get there and unfortunately our second swell is prize otherwise we'd probably be fine but it is prized so we're not going to be fine but we'll see what my opponent draws maybe they don't quite draw they got the VMAX, but if they have like a Guzmahala in this hand, they can get the energy for turn. They can get uh, the U-turn board. They can get, I mean, another the, the power plant. And then we're kind of screwed, to be honest. We would go in with that float up. Uh, we're, I guess we don't just lose. It just gets really tough. Um, but we'll see what they have here. They only have the three card hand. We have backup Marnies if they get into a Snorlax. And that's what they're going for. Going into the Snorlax. Quick ball, thin out the whole hand. Uh, Grimsley is gone. <laughs> Good to know. Another Beatles getting set up, but we have the Marnie. We have the Marnie. They're going to Gourmandize. We're going to go Marnie Nightwatch. Um, kind of keep repeating that loop uh, until we win. We're going to get this down on the Urshifu. That's a great draw. Yeah, Marnie. Boom. Back to the bottom. Now, we are running out of Marnies. We do have one on the bottom now. None off the top draw. A lot of energy, though. We got a lot of energy. And I assume we'll find our VMAX eventually. Uh, we did prize a VMAX as well, so we could get the VMAX off the prize cards. Um, Nightwatch again. Get rid of the tag hole in the all the tag calls of course good to get rid of but what are the other two cards uh it's always a little nerve-wracking there's the swell though so we can uh take care of that power plant should it come down and keep kind of keep up this night watch train but they're confidently setting up this orbital v max which just definitely has me a little bit nervous they're going with the spread um here comes another one what are those last two cards in the hand one is an energy it's just a hard retreat to the strong so just wanting to get off the spread instead of conserving the energy i like conserving the energy there i think if I was them, I would have conserved the energy. <clears throat> but we got the Chaotic Swell now, which is great. Um, got the Eldegoss to attack into that doll the next time that comes up. Here's a boss to try and stall my Crobat. Thankfully, we have a ridiculous amount of energy to get around this. Unfortunately, we don't have that Marnie. Uh, oh my gosh, what a top deck. I was going to say, we do have one left on the top half of the deck that we could top deck. And we do top deck it. Um, I'm just going to go... Is there a second? There is the second Gengar Mimikyu in the deck, so let's thin that out. Throw down an Aurora here to thin that out. Well, and we got the Marnie. 
this is actually huge to have this Marnie here. Combat this draw from my opponent. Um, I could I could switch instead of hard retreating. I'd probably rather keep the switch around. We got the Urshifu as well, which is a great draw. Um, probably should go to hard retreat, keep the switch around for more options later. All right, back at it. Night watch. <laughs> Goodbye, Snorlax. No energy set up in place though, because they've been choosing a our right, guard of the Caitlyn Cynthia and a switch. Caitlyn Cynthia is a great uh get rid of there. Uh, quick ball off the top. I thought off the prize cards. That's fine. We got the swell already off the prize cards. That's all we really care about. We got again. We got this set up so we can float up. <clears throat> Next time they send up a doll, we're gonna probably float up it if we don't feel like the night watch is quite locking them out of the game, which right now is doing a very good job. The night watch is actually. You know what? No, no, no. And I was, I whatever I did was correct. I was like thinking about something else. But if, are they gonna hard retreat again? They got a set of energy in play eventually, uh, but it looks like they might be going for a hard retreat again. <clears throat> Switch back this time. Send up the doll. Munchlax gets a heads up. All right, so Nightwatch does shuffle their deck. So either we let them keep this top deck, which we'll wait and see what their top deck, whatever they're getting, we'll wait and see. Because we might want to go with the Guzman Hall instead and just be like, okay, we'd rather float up KO this doll, but it really does depend. Because getting access to a boss for at some point in this game is a pretty big deal. So they got a boss. What does that do? What does the boss do for them? It doesn't seem like that does a whole ton. rid of these two grab probably this and uh that's it and i think we're just gonna go with the elder gods play here so they have a one card hand but i'm feeling like this is gonna be pretty good if we just elder gods get access to that boss again it gets rid of the doll we could not watch them to a zero card hand but they much like the boss on top which is just so peculiar to me i don't even know what to think about from that and I gotta make this Elder Goss play happen at some point. Is this definitely the best? Seems like the best time to do it. Um, it seems like the best time to do it. Elder Goss back to the deck. I'm gonna go ahead and send up the Dedenne here, I think. Um, get access to boss again. They hit me with the well played. I don't know if that means I lose right now or what. They have a boss. But they can't do, they can't KO my Mewtwo or anything with the boss. They could boss hit my Mewtwo, but then I could hit them back with Calamitous Slash doing a ton of damage. And then we have the Elder Goss for the boss for later in the game. Um, yeah, the Goss is super important. So I'm super curious to see what they even do here uh, or if they even have a play. We know they have, like I said, we know they have boss in it. We don't know what the other card is. Um, but they had like so many options to get off this. But they got heads, so they could have gotten any card from their discard pile. And they chose boss, which doesn't make a whole ton of sense to me because I don't see what a bird keeper made the most sense to me or even a, a strong for Gormandize with how many boss I was down knowing I had to kind of use the Elder Goss. Like, All right, use your Elder Goss, get your boss back. But then if they send up the Snorlax to draw with Gormandize, then we're just a boss away from KO and the Munchlax. So that doesn't feel great for them, I guess. But now I'm just like, I'm just so confused on uh, what's going to happen from here. It's the hard retreat to the Munchlax, another snack search. So we can put them to a zero card hand this turn. And another thing about Night Watch is it does. I'm just going to confirm to make sure. I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, and sh yeah, it shuffles the deck. So even though they got, I didn't even see what they grabbed here. It doesn't tell me. It doesn't matter what they got because I'm going to switch. I'm going to attach another. Uh, I might hold off on that actually. And Night Watch. So we KO this. We, sh we put these cards and we shuffle them into the deck. Um, and then that just means they have... They, they don't get they, they're on a random top deck now they're randomly top deck in a card they don't get to know what that top deck is even though they did use snack search it does shuffle their deck now and now we're just gonna hit him again um can't quite ko us even with two energy but they don't have two energy here they go the guzma Mahala, so they just get the power plant but if they put that in play they have to get it back again and i'm assuming from how they played they only play one power plant but i could be wrong um but it definitely seems like from how they play that they only play one power plant once again i guess maybe i could have actually i could have actually gone with Calamity Slash there, just a little bit more damage. So I should have Calamity Slash there. It made no sense for me to Night Watch there because there was no hand to discard. So I should have Calamity Slashed. Um, yeah, should have gone with the Calamity Slash. There's a Cheryl. Okay, so now I can make up for my mistake no matter what I would have done there. Let's go with Calamity Slash this time. I want to put more energy in play. I guess I'm out of Urshifu, so I could throw this here to get rid of this. Okay, Calamity Slash this time. Let's let's do it correctly here. Calamity Slash 160. We win next turn with Quick Ball for Goss for Boss for Calamitous Slash, KO, the Ore Beetle, or the Urshifu would also work with the Gale Thrust. We got a, or Night Watch would also work. There's another share on top deck. How long will this keep up? Let's find out. All right. 
Calamitous Slash again. Can they heal enough to the point where I deck out? Do I have... I could attack with Eldegoss again, I guess. I can attack with Eldegoss again. I do have another Marnie left in the deck, but obviously I don't want to Marnie them when they have a one-card hand. So then Caitlyn and Cynthia, but because they have a zero-card hand, they're going Caitlyn and Cynthia for one, so they get their one card. And now we finally win the game because we will just Night Watch or Calamitous Slash. I'm going to go with Calamitous Slash and get the dub here in this one as well. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. We got a couple dubs with this Mewfu deck. Um, once again, shout out to Simon Trottier for the list. They took down a big tournament the other day. The list is super cool. The deck's super interesting. I don't know how much I love it yet, but um, I like the idea behind it just because all the cards don't aren't that awkward in the deck. Like They all can kind of fit there, and they all do different things, so they add a lot of depth to the deck potentially for you know Mewtwo to do its thing, and then Urshifu does its thing, and they can both kind of coexist in the deck and do their things together and add a whole bunch of new lines of play and stuff to each other so super cool idea super cool deck i'm excited to play some more with it uh let me know what you guys think if you guys play have played around with the deck in the comment section down below and i will uh, see you tomorrow